Okay, hello everyone. I hope you all are keeping well and fine. So I, Nidhi Mishra, welcome you to the class of Indian Society. Indian Society, which, which is under GS Paper 1, Beans Paper, right? Okay, so uh, as we move forward, uh, we have already uh, discussed about Indian society uh, in the introductory class uh, yesterday, right? Now, moving ahead in that, we'll be looking into uh, another dimension of your uh, syllabus that is on Indian diversity, right? That is diversity and also the underlying bond, which is very important. And usually the questions are asked on this. So we'll have a basic understanding that what actually diversity means, what it comprises, what are, uh, what are the underlying bonds? What are the threats to it? And uh, how we can be very much aware to this uh, very important issue of diversity, right? So quickly, I just want to share um, our one PPT on it. I hope uh, it will be useful for you all. So, uh, uh, so what exactly is... Uh, uh, what do we mean by uh, diversity? See, first of all, we have to understand, and as we know, as we have discussed in our last class, that Indian society is a plural society, right? It's a plural society because it is diverse in nature. I have discussed that diverse in nature it, because it has various markers, you know, the markers of caste, class, race, ethnicity, religion. Right? So there are various markers, right? So first of all, you need to understand that India is a plural society. India is a diverse society. India is a land of multicultural society, right? Where uh, so many cultures exist together, right? So the, it, since we have so many cultures, yet there are, uh, you know, uh, issues related to it. But uh, the most important thing is that it adds a strong fabric to the Indian society and it gives strength and unity, right? So it is actually, the Indian society is actually characterized by unity and diversity. Why it is characterized by unity and diversity and why this phrase is very, very important and it is ingrained because, you know, but, uh, uh, our Republic Day also, we all are celebrating Republic Day. So it is also, you know, this um, ethos is also very, very important that how we celebrate our national festival. We all are different, yet we all are one, right? In that way, we can understand it. So characterized by uh, unity, uh, it is correct. Uh, the, the basic characteristic is the uh, uh, is the diversity, and the very important and prominent feature is we all are united on one platform on one front. So it is actually the uh, India as a land uh, is actually the uh, what uh, I would say that it's 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 a land of syncretic culture. You know, where uh, we see mixing of culture, for example, uh, syncretic culture, the, the culture of Hinduism and, and Islam, we see it, it is very much evident in our country also, in its uh, architecture, you can see various uh, uh, buildings, which actually uh, shows the impact of uh, Islamic culture. So India is a land of syn syncretic culture, and also it's the synthesis of cultures, religion and languages. You know, which are spoken in our country. So there are a diversity. So for first and most important thing that we all should bear this clarity in our mind that diversity means differences. You know, like my fingers, all my fingers are of uh, are, are are not of same size. In the same way, we all are not same, and we can never be same. We are different, yet we are together. That is what is important to understand, right? So we all are different, and foremost uh, uh, foremost thing is that. Uh, diversity never symbolizes inequality. Always remember this in your mind that, that diversity symbolizes differences. You know, we all are different. We all are unique in ourselves. All the cultures are unique. We all, uh, the languages spoken are unique, are different, right? So diversity signifies differences, variety. You can understand in this way, variety. Diversity signifies variety. You know, we have uh, n number of varieties on the basis of caste, class, religion, language, culture, right? So diversity, we have, it's a, it's a land of uh, diversity, which are, the, there are various markers of it, right? And 
yet we are together. So always remember that diversity never signifies inequality. It never signifies inequality. It signifies that we are different. We are unique. You know, and now it depends that how we celebrate this diversity. Nonetheless, that diversity poses some problem, some threat, some issues, some frictions at time, but we need to celebrate this diversity. We need to accept this diversity. Why? Because India is a land of accommodative culture. India is a land of assimilative culture. We accommodate. Right? We, we have seen accommodation, we have seen so much of warfare, yet we have seen, you know, great emperors converting to uh, uh, giving up war and glory and converting and embracing the, uh, the, uh, the uh, embracing the, um, uh, the, the love, the harmony uh, in, the, in the form of Buddhism, you can say that the, the example which I am taking of Emperor Ashoka. So India is a land which symbolizes love, harmony, peace, right? So diversity, we need to celebrate diversity. We are different, yet we are together. So unity in diversity is actually the strength of Indian society. That is very, very important. And most of the time, the questions related to this are asked, right? Moving ahead, so as I have discussed that diversity emphasizes differences. It emphasizes that we are unique, we are varied. We are varied in terms of our culture. We are varied in terms of our caste, our ethnicity, our identity on the basis of religion. So it emphasizes variety. It emphasizes variedness. It emphasizes differences. It never emphasizes inequality. Because I belonging to North India and somebody belonging to South India, we have different culture. We share different cuisine. We speak different language. But we, we are different. But we are not equal or unequal. We are different. We are varied in terms of our culture, our language, our look, our, our get up, right? But it never symbolizes that we are equal or unequal. That is what is important to understand. Now, differences may be of various types based on uh, biological, religious, linguistic that I have been talking about, that these are the markers of diversity. These are the markers of differences. These are the markers on which we are different, right? Language is spoken, caste, there are n number of castes in our society and our culture, right? Now, this is diversity, but it leads, this diversity leads to unity. Unity, what does it mean? Unity means that we are integrated, we are united, we are one, right? I belong to a particular area, to a particular geographical region. I speak different language. Right? I look differently, you know, I eat different food, but yet I'm an Indian, right? So this feeling of oneness, this feeling of Venus is very, very important. And this is what actually leads to integration. Now, always remember that, you know, the one of the feature of society in general, I'm talking about in sociological perspective, you know, when you define society. So society is defined by its community, by its people, but at the same time, society has a very important feature that it has a boundary, right? right? There is a physical boundary. So when you uh, actually uh, allocate phys physical boundary to any society, you also start relating yourself to this particular boundary, that you are within the boundary and you belong to this particular boundary or to particular land, right? So this, the feeling of we-ness, the feeling of we, the feeling of unity, togetherness is important. And this is what actually leads to unity. So we are diverse yet we are united, yet we are together. So unity in diversity means that unity without uniformity. I'm not equal, I'm not same, I look different, yet we are together. So unity without uniformity, right? There's no uniformity and diversity without fragmentation, right? Now why I'm mentioning here diversity without fragmentation, let's take ethnic diversity, basis on the forms of, one of the forms of ethnic diversity, that we have, for example, uh, celebrating uh, tribal culture or Indian uh, tribal festivals, 
right? So these actually, what does it sig signifies or what does it say is that we value each and every culture you know, our tribal culture around comprises of seven to eight percent, but yet we value each culture, you know, the distinct culture, and we want to preserve it. We want to be known. We want uh, our culture known by all because we want to celebrate it. We want to preserve it. So uh, we, uh, for example, Adi Mahotsa, that is uh, celebrating tribal culture, tribal festival, or uh, uh, the present government, which actually celebrates this, Vandhan Vikas Kendras, where, uh, uh, where various uh, artifacts and specific culture-related products are been actually uh, showcased in, that, uh, uh, in those Kendras in the in those center uh, which actually boosts the economy also and it also gives recognition to the uh, tribal articraft handicraft and any other product any other forest product also if i talk about such kind of kindras are a, a very glaring example here in delhi then uh, uh, the the very famous spot which is also you know uh, uh, usually visited by not during this COVID time, but usually being visited by all of us. And that is the very famous place and the very favorite place that is Delhi Heart. You know, the Delhi Heart, you know, Delhi Heart or Delhi Heart. It heart means what? It's a bazaar, it's a place, it's a marketplace. So Delhi Heart actually it's a congregation. It's a place where various uh, uh, stalls are made from different states, you know, in the North India, for example, from Bihar, UP, from uh, Northeastern states, Assam, various states from so Southern India, uh, Andhra Pradesh, Kerala. So they actually showcase or from topmost North, Jammu and Kashmir. So they all showcase their uh, specific and distinct cultural uh, entity or cultural product. And uh, it is being showcased and also it is it is open for uh, selling out it is open for um, you know uh, we, uh, we as common people to purchase certain distinct uh, artiform or artifact so uh, these kendras such kendras such hearts are also very important and this is what actually signifies that we uh, we celebrate um, we do not celebrate uniformity, rather we celebrate diversity and we love different kind of products, artifacts of different culture. We decorate our homes these days with various uh, kinds of artifacts and, and um, ethnic pieces, right? We love to decorate our houses, uh, our living spaces with that. So this is what signifies. It signifies unity. It signifies our attachment to our society and our varied culture to this society. So this attachment, this oneness and feeling, this Venus is very, very important, you know, when we talk about unity in diversity. Now, what are the various forms of diversity? What are the markers of diversity? How we and you are different, we are not uniform. So I am different, you are different on the basis of your religion, right? So religious diversity, yet another so religious diversity, there are various uh, religions which are found here in India, uh, for example, uh, Hinduism, uh, Hindu religion, for example, Christian, for example, Sikh, Christianity, Jainism, Buddhism. So these all are various religious diversity which are found in India and they cohabit peacefully. On, our la on, on this land named India, right? So we have religious diversity. Then linguistic diversity. What is linguistic diversity? Language, the different kinds of languages which are spoken here in India, right? There are families of, uh, uh, of uh, languages you know, which are spoken here. Uh, uh, in India, so you know, we have linguistic diversity, you know, and not only that, the very different uh, language, we have also dialect, you know, the local language. So dialect also, we have n number of languages and local dialects, right? So we have linguistic diversity. Now there has been uh, a greater emphasis and a stress on preserving um, our language, Right? Why? Because language has a very, very important, our mother tongue, you know, mother tongue has a very, very important role in our education. So this uh, uh, national education policy and it, 
2020, NEP 2020 emphasizes on preserving mother tongue and also as a medium of instruction, mother tongue as a medium of instruction in the early years of education. So you can understand that how much it is important, you know, and how it is uh, significant you know, to recognize our linguistic diversity. So we have different languages, we have different dialect, our local language is important to be preserved because it has been proved through various researches in psychology and cognitive psychology that that uh, those students who actually those children who actually uh, learn in their uh, mother tongue in their local language it actually enhances their mental faculty and the grasping power of the children actually increases their cognitive ability also increases so this linguistic diversity is very very important right then we have uh, another marker of diversity that is caste diversity. Caste, which was actually, uh, which is based on the, um, the division the division or the segmental division, the hierarchical division of the society, which is based on occupation. That is what caste. So caste, that is the, the four, four, four varnas, the four, four varna system we have in our, in our society, uh, evident in, our, in Indian society. Uh, largely, and other than this four Varna society, other than this four Varna, uh, uh, it has been also, uh, you know, the uh, uh, mentioned by um, uh, M. N. Shini was that though the caste is hierarchical and segmental, you know, and mobility, upward mobility specifically, is restricted, but yet there has been significant. Uh, uh, a significant uh, uh, upward mobility is being noticed through a very important process of Sanskritization, quote unquote Sanskritization, in which you know Amit Shinivas said that the people from the uh, from the lower caste they actually practices or or for or uh, uh, copy the uh, practices the cultural practices of the dominant caste. Right, the less dominant caste actually imbibes or copies the practices of dominant caste. So Sanskritization is one um, important term which has been given by M. N. Shrinivas. Uh, on caste, uh, Louis Dumo has also talked about the various features of caste. Louis Dumo, the fa famous uh, sociologist, he has talked about the segmental division of society on the basis of caste. He has also talked about the various characteristics of caste, that is endogamy, exo. Uh, there has been restrictions on sharing of food that is kacha and pakka food uh, so the restrictions on marriage so these are the features which he has actually talked about the famous sociologist louis dumo our society other than caste is uh, is can also be seen which will be taking up in uh, another section that is patrilineal or matrilineal society patrilineal society where the lineage is traced by father and matrilineal society where the lineage is traced by mother right or patriarchal or matriarchal uh, authority uh, or society that is patriarchal society that is where the authority is owned by father and matriarchal where the authority is owned by mother but it is said that uh, matriarchal society is a myth why matriarchal? Because matri means mother and archal, archi is authority. So uh, though our society, Indian society uh, has in many parts, for example, in Northeastern part, in Southern India, Northeast India, in Southern India, we see matrilineal society where the lineage uh, is passed from mother to their daughter, but yet the authority you know, the, the, the dominance, the authority is not actually being exercised by women, by mother. Rather, even in matrilineal society, the authority is actually exercised by, uh, by mother's brother, that is mama, uncle, maternal uncle holds larger right even in, in matriarchal or matrilineal society. So it is said that matriarchy is actually a myth. It's not that real, right? So other than caste diversity, we see cultural diversity, right? We have uh, different kinds of culture based on 
culture how do you say how the various practices which actually do based we have different culture because we have different geographical location you know for example those um, uh, the if if i talk about geographical location then uh, people living in mountains have different cultural practices than people living around or living in the seaside near the seaside right near the seashore so river beside the river banks they have different kind of culture now what kind of different culture you can say they have a different eating pattern in cuisine you can see it very very clearly you know for example say take take an example of kerala you know they are uh, their staple food is uh, rice and uh, fish why because uh, uh, because uh, or, or or say coconut right so why because this is that is what is largely being uh, uh, largely found or easily found there because of its geographical location right so uh, your geographical location also adds a uh, diversity right cultural diversity because you have different eating pattern you have different way of living you have different way of uh, uh, earning your livelihood so that also actually leads to diversity okay <clears throat> so these were the factors the markers of diversity now what are the factors that that are important to understand that it poses threat at times to our unity no so we also need to understand that everything is not rosy rosy everything is not you know pinky and pompous we also need to understand that there are certain factors you know there are various issues which have been problematic in our society and which is actually threatening Uh, the very fabric of uh, of uh, our society that is unity you know that is oneness you know sometimes it it actually uh, uh, poses problem now what are the factors that actually lead to unity among diversity that we must remember that we have a syncretic culture as i just now said that we have as uh, we see the amalgamation of culture we see how we respect different culture we have our, our land has seen so much of invasion you know and we we actually uh, uh, we bear the testimony of these invasion in terms of various literature and also in terms of the architecture but yet for example humayun to for example even uh, our parliament you know that actually bears the uh, the the impact of uh, islamic culture right so we have syncretic culture get another very important uh, factor which leads to or which is um, a kind of um, important uh, factor to understand that it is that it leads to uh, unity among diversity that we are diverse yet we signify ourselves with one thing that is the constitutional identity our constitution for which we actually celebrate our republic day so how can we forget this you know our national festival are very very important because it actually gives us the feeling of Uh, oneness togetherness you know that patriotic fervor is very very important this this constitutional identity gives us the feeling of patriotism that patriotic fervor you know that unfurling the tri uh, tricolor flag is you know it it gives us goosebumps you know and we the way we stand to our national anthem and uh, we proudly sing our national anthem so constitutional identity also uh, it 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 gives it adds unity amongst the diversity so um, uh, we have uh, one of the lengthiest uh, constitution and uh, it has various uh, features that it guarantees so many rights our right to um, freedom our right to equality our uh, so many rights are guaranteed by it the three tier um, the three tier um, A governing body which it actually talks about so the, the constitutional identity the unique constitution in itself also gives unity in diversity then religious coexistence we are varied in terms of our religion uh, uh, even in a single village uh, people from so many religion you know they they stay together in urban setting also uh in my next day or door neighbor i hardly bother bother that uh, the my neighbor is uh, neighbor practices which religion right so this religious coexistence is also one of the markers of unity among amidst diversity though there has been very though there has been some uh, uh, uh instances of uh, of strifes of uh, problems or uh, animosity on the basis of religion but 
these are the uh, are uh, very uh, what i would say these are the issues which have which, which could be tackled very easily when we understand that we all are one we all are together we all are united we all are indian first and then our religion or any other identity comes in yet another factor which actually leads to unity in diversity in india is the uh, interstate mobility which our uh, constitution allows uh, uh, that me or you can visit any state there are certain limitations in mountainous regions the where we cannot go and buy land but yet we are allowed to move freely anywhere in india you know that is why these days tourism is also being promoted so largely so this interstate mobility also binds us together it keeps us connected when we when we go together when we are on visit to some place we are so open heartedly enjoy the cuisine of that particular place we enjoy the geographical location of that particular place we try to buy some uh some souvenir of that particular place so we enjoy so when we enjoy when we feel of oneness it why we are why we are able to uh, you know uh, go and visit any other state because our government our uh, our constitution allows interstate mobility and when we uh, uh, when we go and visit any other place it gives us exposure to that particular language culture or that particular state right the 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 you the diversity of that particular uh, culture we enjoy it so interstate mobility is also one of the factor which leads to unity amongst diversity yet another factor related to interstate mobility only i would say that pilgrimage uh, um, uh, locations pilgrimage and religious practices are also very important you know it it, it leads to unity for example um, i may be visiting uh, in assam uh, kamakhya temple right so this is one of the very uh, uh, prominent uh, place of uh, uh, goddess and uh, which one actually uh, tries to visit pay homage right so this also adds this also binds me to that place to the to the particular culture of our northeastern states in the same way visiting maybe badrinath kedarnath in the mountainous region so this pilgrimage is also the various religious practices also it what it does it it binds us together we are different we speak differently we look differently but yet we are together in the same way climatic integration via monsoon for example we celebrate various festivals on the basis of our uh, uh, of our monsoon pattern for example celebrating bihu pongal makar sankranti so these are one of the examples of various examples which also binds us together then how can we forget in present time is sports and cinema you know or today uh, various uh, web series uh, which we see today on uh, you know flashed on amazon or uh, or or netflix which ott platform which we say so this also makes us aware of various culture of various uh, cultural practices and we are we stay to, united you know we feel uh, for that particular place in the same way cinema cinema also which depicts various culture which depicts various languages it keeps us united we try to uh, connect ourselves with uh, cinema and sports right so these are the factors which actually um, keeps us united amongst diversity so as i said that there are problems also there are threats also which leads to which actually shakens this factor of unity which actually you know sometimes disturbs this uh, feeling of oneness of togetherness of unity and the very glaring and the um, you know, prominent is regionalism you know this regionalism is the feeling of belongingness to your own particular region and feeling as if the uh, you know or any other uh, person coming from some other state you know if if they uh, if they start residing in particular region they are being uh, harassed or they are being actually uh, maybe uh, some uh, 
heated argument uh, uh, is uh, is being uh, seen is being uh, examples have been witnessed on the basis of regionalism so regionalism is the feeling of it can be uh, you know related or it, you can relate it to the son of the soil concept that this region particularly belongs to me you know and how some uh, how other people from other state can come and stay here and enjoy the benefits of my region right so this is uh, one uh, problem which is actually threats. Now, what are the factors of regionalism we'll be, which we'll be covering in another topic because it is yet another topic which has to be covered, right? So um, that we'll take up in another uh, class where we'll be talking about regionalism, communalism, and secularism that we'll discuss in another topic separately. But regionalism, but very quickly, I'll just say that why such feelings actually crop up, the feeling of regionalism, right? Because there has been uh, uh, incessant exploitation of natural resources. There is not equal uh, distribution or equitable distribution of opportunities, equitable distribution of opportunities among, uh, among the inhabitants of that particular region. So these are the factors actually which leads to the feeling of regionalism, right? Then divisive politics. Obviously, uh, the politics of vote bank or, or the issues of vote bank or, or, the, or the politics based on caste and class, it all leads to divisiveness in the society, right? When one party tries to woo, uh, try to, tries to woo uh, its voters on the basis of caste identity or uh, on the basis of religious identity, this actually leads to divisiveness in the society. Then there are developmental imbalances, which in turn you can see it can lead to the problem of regionalism. What are the developmental imbalances that some of the uh, that economic backwardness, for example, one state is flourishing and the other state is uh, is poverty stricken? People are there, you know, in a in a in a poor state, right? So this economic backwardness, for example, in maybe you can say in uh, states like uh, Bihar, in states like northeastern region, because of its geographical location, also. So there has been developmental imbalances. There has been not proper um, development. So we, this actually leads to a, 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 a aggressive feeling among its citizen, and so they start, um, you know, showing it. With, uh, uh, in terms of their behavior. So this developmental balances are also one of the factors which actually threatens our unity in terms of regionalism, right? For example, separatist um, demand of uh, uh, separate state or separatist and secessionist tendencies in Northeastern state, for example, the, the problem of Bodo land. So these are the examples of developmental imbalance, right? Which leads to which threatens the very fabric of Indian uh, society or, or, uh, or, or, the, or our unity. Then uh, uh, we are diverse, we are different on the basis of ethnicity, but sometimes this feeling of nativeness also poses threat to ourselves. Why? Because there has been job competition, there has been limited economic um, and other resources. So this actually leads to a kind of, uh, 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 a kind of uh, trouble which actually poses a threat to unity and um, a threat to one's identity that this that that i am native of this particular place so i this place belong to me so there has been the instances of frequent clashes has been you know evident in uh, bodos uh, and bengali speaking muslims in assam which are very very uh, frequent and which can be which can be seen or which you can hear in news also. So these are the certain ethnic differences also leads to or threatens unity of our culture, unity of our society. And this is further accentuated, this is further accelerated by the concept of son of the soil, that the, the soil belongs to me. I am son of this soil. I, now this is again a gender bias concept, but but this 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 uh, uh, um, I belong to this particular area, I belong to this particular a state, so this state is mine more than you. So such kind of differences, such kind of uh, issues also leads to uh, a problem towards the unity in our country. Uh, for example, the, um, uh, we, have, we all have seen and we all have ever, ever, um, uh, you know, read in the newspaper uh, that how uh, in Maharashtra there has been uh, clashes between Maharashtrian and people who have migrated 
uh, pe people who have migrated from Bihar and Uttar Pradesh, so they have been squashed. Also, they have been uh, they have been thrashed and uh, tried to pushed out of the state. So such kind of problems actually these are the problems which are threats to our unity to the to to India's unity. And why it is so? It is because, because these are the problems which are interlinked, the developmental imbalances, uh, there has been a job competition, the, the resources are limited. So because of those factors, uh, such kind of problems and issues, they actually crop up, right? Now, yet another uh, factor which also leads to, uh, which also threatens our unity is the geographical location. If, if any, uh, any location, if, is, if it is quite far flung or there is no proper connectivity, then that also leads to a feeling of isolation, a kind of alienation that we are alienated, we are not connected. So that also leads to a threat to unity. Now, interstate conflict, because of various issues, for example, a Kaveri issue, which is very, very important, um, you know, these days again, the river Kaveri dispute. So interstate conflicts because of various issues, because of maybe linguistic also, language is also spoken. So this also leads to interstate con conflict and which further uh, threatens the various, the, the, the very fabric of our country, that is unity. But the but the very important point which you all have to remember, which we all as a citizen of our country remember, that these problems are, you know, are there and very much there. They are a very real problem. But the problem is not of diversity per se. We shouldn't say that this diversity is posing us trouble. This diversity is posing us problem. No, the problem is how we accept diversity. The problem is that we are not able to accept uh, open or wholeheartedly our diverse culture, our varied culture. You know, we are not able to handle so well our diverse and varied culture of our, of our Indian society. And that is what is the problem. The problem is never of diversity. You know, how we are handling this issue is important and that is what actually leads to problem. So the problem of regionalism, the problem of communalism, the problem of ethnic conflict have all arisen because the fruits of development have not been equitably distributed. Because the benefit of economic development has not been equitable in all the states to all its citizens, right? So that only actually leads to a feeling of aggression, a feeling of, uh, you know, uh, a, a hatred among, uh, among us. That is what actually leads to such kind of feeling, you know, somewhere we feel deprived. That is, uh, you know, we are not... Uh, enjoying the opportunities which are being enjoyed by others. So such kind of issues actually leads or poses threat to the, uh, to, the to, to the, to our country's uh, unity. But again, here I would stress that the problem has never been posed by the diverse culture of India. The problem we see because we are not able to handle the diverse culture so well. That is what is very, very important, right? So. We have to understand, you need to conclude uh, in this way that this unity is, uh, unity in diversity is our uh, hallmark, is our, is what is, our, this is what is our um, identity. And we need to protect this diversity in such a way that it is, that we, that we are different, we are diverse, but we are together always. That is, that has to be there and, and India has witnessed it. India is actually a land of syncretic culture. India is a land of love, harmony, and peace, right? We always, even in, in our um, international politics, you can see in our international relations also, we, we always follow the policy of peace. We never go for war. We never go for extreme, uh, you know, action. So these are the examples which we have to write in our answer, which actually gives weightage to our answer that yes, the aspirant, the, the aspirant is very much aware of all the social issues. You know? that one has to understand. So um, uh, one, one question was also being uh, asked on this uh, um, very particular topic. And that um, the question was that uh, uh, I would just uh, read. Yes. So what are the um, problems? Uh, examine historically. Uh, 
proven sources of unity in uh, uh, proven sources of unity in midst of diversity in india 10 marks question has been asked in your uh, mizoram public service examination uh, so um, that is what is important uh, uh, to understand so it, it says that examine historically proven sources of unity. So these are the sources of unity that we have discussed amongst diversity, that we are diverse, we are different, yet we are together. And that is how you have to substantiate your answer, that what are the factors, what are the markers of diversity, what leads us, what and how those factors leads unity in diversity, what are the factors, what are the sources from where we are drawing unity, and what are the problems that are posing threats to this unity of our India, right, to the towards India's unity. So with this, I end your class here. Uh, and in our next class, we'll be discussing uh, women's issue, women's uh, uh, movement, and uh, role of women's uh, movement, women's organization, and further we'll be moving up. Thank you so much.